Hello, everyone. Welcome to the final talk um, of the State of the Map 2021 academic track. Um, I would like to remind everyone that what's being presented are um, research projects that are also being published in uh, open proceedings um, that will be made available um, in the next in the next few days, I believe. So we will follow up with a, a link to the uh, proceedings where you can read more about um, about these uh, these excellent pieces of research that we've heard about today. Um, our next talk is called Involvement of OpenStreetMap in the European uh, H2020 Projects. I believe that's Horizon 2020. Um, and our speakers today are Damien Gro. He's a researcher at Inria Sophia on Antopolis, uh, based in the Wimix group. He has been contributing to research efforts in semantic web technologies and focusing on distributing query evaluation and on designing complex transformation pipelines for heterogene heterogeneous uh, big data. Prior to joining uh, INRIA, he had research positions at Trinity College Dublin and at Fraunhofer IAIS in Germany. And joining him as well is Thibaut uh, Michel, uh, a senior researcher at WMAP based in Montpellier, France. He has spent his last eight years working on improving augmented reality applications based on geolocation, including sensor fusion for indoor location and navigation. Previously, before joining WMAP, he obtained a doctorate from the University of Grenoble Alps and worked for several years in at INRIA uh, Grenoble. So I will turn it over to you all. Thank you very much for the really nice words and the nice introduction. I'm going to uh, stop sharing my webcam to save bandwidth a bit. Um, and let me jump right to the presentation full screen. Um, so good morning, good afternoon, or good evening. I don't know wherever you are. Um, Welcome to that to, to that presentation about the involvement of OpenStreetMap in European H2020 projects. I'm Damien, and together with Thibault, who is also here, uh, we're going to present uh, the first findings that, that that we have been doing here. Um, um, but first off, uh, a bit of really a slight presentation of ourselves. I don't know if I will go into the details because they, they have already been covered um, two seconds. Uh, go uh, in the in the night presentation so my main researcher for cloud around uh, the web data graphs and uh, that kind of uh, distributed knowledge uh, that you can have access uh, directly on the internet and especially i've been working on uh, that trend uh, all around the semantic web initiatives so how to properly evaluate extract data from distributed heterogeneous uh, data sources uh, while having a scalability point of view in mind. Um, and recently, I've been joining as a permanent researcher the WIMIX group um, in, in Ria, Sofia Antipolis, which is in the southeast part of France, so the sunny side of France there. Uh, and basically, we, the main research focuses of the group are how to properly uh, represent knowledge on the web and extract uh, information from various sources. Uh, in order to you know design seamless uh, integrated pipelines uh, refining uplifting the data there um, i think i can also uh, leave the stage to Thibaut so that he can present himself there yeah shortly so i'm senior researcher at WIMAP. Uh, i'm focused my research efforts on geomotor reality and that involves uh, some topics like uh, indoor navigation sensor fusion computer vision multi-level cartography i'm also the creator of a plugin for um, mapbox glgs or maplib glgs to enable multi formats which is named mapgl indoor i'll let you continue um it's loading uh, I'm part of the WMAP company, uh, as, um, uh, and WMAP company developed some maps to visualize geo data with, without programming efforts uh, for clients. Uh, we are 12 members. We are located in Montpellier and Paris in France. 
we have more than 80 customers like Air France, Total MS Perth, GC Deco, RATP, and a lot of others. We have more than uh, 300 million views for, on our maps, and we're part of uh, some community like uh, Open Air Cloud and obviously OpenStreetMap. Thanks, uh, Damien, for this. Oh, yeah. And I let you the, the talk yeah, about okay. the topic today. Thank you very much, Thibault, for, for all the nice words and the, the, the presentation. Um, so now let's let's dive into the, the topic today, uh, which is the European public research landscape. And um, so what you have here, because we are in Europe and we, we are working also in Europe, and what we have with the European Commission here is that the EU is funding uh, research, public research and public research projects through various programs. Uh, they have been starting in 1984, and actually each program grants funds to some projects according to general axis of research, axis of focus, uh, various pillars. And as researchers, we have to have in mind when we want to have those kind of funding that the goals of those general programs are to foster research excellence, to connect academia with industry. So the idea is to to make a big the connection and the, the final use case um, between the research prototypes that could be made directly into lab in labs directly into some uh, production environment and also to enable cross domain projects and as you can see on the right hand side uh, the budgets have uh, been increasing all over the years there and in particular uh, what we have been doing here in that research initiative and that study with Timo is that we we had a look at the Horizon 2020 uh, program, which is the last program uh, that, that was just finishing in 2020. So um, Horizon 2020, H2020 as we call it, uh, has been you know spread since uh, from 13 to 2020, and the overall budget um, has been of you know 80 billion euros. Uh, it was initially provisioned at 77, but it, it has been increasing a bit. And the main challenges, the societal challenges of DH 2020 are highly interdisciplinary from health demographic changes or well-being to, for instance, climate actions, uh, resource efficiencies, uh, while bearing in mind that all research has to be innovative, inclusive, uh, to reflect you know, societal changes. Uh, so that's basically the, the the landscape of the European Commission uh, research that, that that is running all the time here in Europe. Um, and in addition to that, uh, there are two facets of open data of open access that uh, is mandatory in H or was mandatory in H twenty twenty projects. Uh, first, an open access. Um, to publications that are made directly in the projects. So each beneficiary must, it's a requirement, must open all the publications. And similarly, there is an open access policy about research data, uh, meaning that all the documentation is and has to be available directly uh, so that the projects can be you know, fully funded at the end. Um, with Tibo, we had that kind of um, reflection or idea that it would be interesting considering the open access rule and the high interdisciplinarity of H 2020 to have a look uh, at how you know OpenStreetMap as a whole project um, and considering its open policy uh, how it is integrated into the public research landscape in Europe um, is it the go-to a toolkit when geodata are used, for instance, those were the kind of questions. And a simple idea that we had, a simple a simple approach, and that might be a bit naive, but that gave already us uh, some nice findings and results, it was to crawl systematically all the H2020 projects, searching for OSM mentions directly to the texts. Um, and not only OSM, we have been broadening a bit our scope, so as, you, as you'll see right after. Um, so where to extract data? Data, uh, Because it's supposed to be all open access, but where to find it? Uh, mainly, you have two main sources uh, provided by, by the EU, which are CORDIS and Data Europa. Uh, additionally, you have the online websites of 
the European Union, the various projects, and so on and so forth. And you have different types of accessible documents each time for each project, uh, such as the deliverables, the scientific articles, the presentation, the blog post, the website, and so on and so forth. And here in that study, we focused on deliverables uh, because they are the regular reports on findings and methodologies that scientists, you know, built and write on uh, to describe what they are doing. So if there are some mentions about OSM, we had uh, we had the feeling that there should be mentions there in the deliverables. Um, how practically we did that? So we, we scripted it all using Bash for all the routines, so obviously performances could be improved, but this, is the, the, this was not the point there. Um, we had to heavily rely on the websites, unfortunately not too much on the APIs because they were missing some data, they were lacking some pieces of information, and we had also to face some access shutdowns several times. Um, we based our uh, routines on regular expression to extract and collect our statistics. So here are some examples on how we extracted, for instance, occurrences of OpenStreetMap, OSM, um, OpenCMap, or Google, or GMAPs, for instance, uh, the others. But just to give you an idea of the type of regex that we run, that we run, sorry, on all the projects deliverable. Um, finally, some statistics um, about the amount of data that we crawled. Um, overall, you had 33-ish thousands distinct projects that were reviewed, among which uh, 8,479 projects were having deliverables. Um, the other projects were having other kind of documents, and we kept them out of the scope for the moment. But among those, del those projects having deliverables, we reviewed the 92,612 deliverables. Um, this means that we had to review and download and scroll and crawl everything like almost 300 gigabytes. Um, there are more than 1 billion words that have been checked and reviewed. Um, and it took more than six days for our cluster to make it, uh, to make it done. Um, here are the first results that we found. Uh, first, in, term, in terms of occurrences, uh, just having a look at the occurrences of all the H2020 open deliverables, so here is a logarithmic uh, y-axis, uh, we found that OpenStreetMap were mentioned uh, one order of magnitude more than uh, Google Map, for instance, which is also, again, one order of magnitude more than Bing Maps in terms of mentions. Uh, so among those deliverables, uh, almost 20,000 mentions were given to OpenStreetMap. Um, there is also OpenCMap, as you can see. Um, we'll come back to, to that later. Uh, additionally, we had also a look at the co-occurrences within the deliverables between the various um, set of uh, mentions that we are having a look. So for instance, OpenStreetMap and Google Maps, they were often mentioned in the same deliverables. Uh, OpenStreetMap and Bing Maps, a bit less, and so on. Um, at the end of the day, we had almost 2,000 distinct deliverable mentioning at least one time OSM. And if we want to have a, a small zoom in on OpenCMap, uh, considering all the deliverables, we wanted to also have a look at the connection between OpenCMap as a specific initiative of OpenStreetMap and OpenStreetMap. And we saw that actually most of the time, OpenCMap and OSM are going together, you know, inside of the deliverable. Um, finally, for those kind of first glimpse at our results, um, we had also a look at the context a bit uh, around those mentions. And we wanted to see if uh, the point of interest, you know, the, this, these terms, this regex uh, point of interest was often mentioned uh, in the same deliverable uh, as OpenStreetMap or Google Maps or Bing Maps. And surprisingly, it appeared that people, they are not uh, often connecting point of interest with uh, cartographic services. As you can see here, um, most of the time, almost 
yeah, 1700 times, um, there were deliverables mentioning points of interest without mentioning any kind of cartographic related services. That was a bit of a surprise for us. Um, finally, our uh, scripts, they allowed us also to extract the top H2020 projects mentioning OSM. Uh, for instance, the top mention, uh, having the most mentions within all the deliverables was for the 5G in fire project, uh, which is not so surprising yeah, considering the, the fact that they were in the project uh, considering deploying lots of uh, 5G antennas and they wanted to use uh, OpenStreetMap as the database you know, to, to store the location and so on. Um, so that's mainly uh, the first results that, uh, that that we gathered and collected uh, in that initiative. Uh, so now let's wrap up. Um, as a conclusion, um, what we saw uh, is that OSN, OpenStreetMap, is the most mentioned uh, solution or from the reviewed terms that we were looking at. Um, it's followed then by Google Map with one order of magnitude less mentions. And it's also really interesting to see that these projects Evolving OSM were overall backed by almost 4 billion euros, so of public money. So those projects, they were uh, supported a bit uh, thanks to, 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 to the nice work of the community, of the OpenStreetMap community. So that's really important to say there. Uh, and in terms of further and future perspectives, uh, we'd like to review other type of sources uh, not exclusively deliverable, but we would like also to focus on articles like uh, scientific articles and software source codes, for instance. Uh, would be also great to apply our scripts to other European funding schemes and programs. Uh, also, not exclusively to European, we could also uh, have a look at other agencies and maybe adding other OSM related initiatives like Open Cycle Map could be interesting to see if there is the same trend as with Open CMAP. Uh, finally, I'm going to conclude with a word on reproducibility. Um, everything that, that, that we have been doing with Thibault is available uh, online via a web page um, posted on GitHub, and also all the source code is available on my GitHub account. Uh, thank you very much all for your attention and would be happy to answer questions with Thibaut. Wonderful. Thank you so much for that talk. Um, that is some very, very interesting. Um, yeah, that's that's very interesting to see how much that's uh, OSM was mentioned and also backed by four billion euros of public money. Um, that's impressive. Uh, I see we have a couple uh, questions uh, piling in here, so I will um, I will just start here uh, in the order they came in. Um, this first question: Open CMAP uh, is the occurrence of Open CMAP in the data uh, due to some specific projects. Um, did you did you look into into that a little bit in a little bit more detail? Yeah, yeah, indeed. Um, the mentions of OpenC maps they were mainly um, coming from a few number of projects. Um, I don't remember exactly, but like thirty ish projects, and all those projects they were uh, dealing with harbors, sea uh, uh, coasts, you know that kind of uh, ship or shipyard related projects. So. Actually, yeah, OpenCMAP was completely uh, mentioned, exclusively mentioned, when it was completely related, I would say. OK, thank you. Um, have you looked into when, uh, in the timeline of a project, OSM appears? Uh, example, is it usually there already in the first deliverable or discovered by the project only after? And then is there some stage in a project when it, when it disappears? Oh, it's a, it's a bit, it's a really nice question. It's a bit hard to answer. Uh, from the deliverables we picked to have a look and you know check whether we were not you know grasping some uh, false positive results. Uh, what we could see is that when OSM starts to be mentioned uh, within a project, uh, 
usually it's dimensions are spread all around I mean, all across the deliverables so i would say from a to z uh from the beginning till the end of the project it's usually mentioned um and it's often mentioned directly from the proposal stage because from the deliverable you can also have sometimes a look at the proposals you know that were sent before even the money or the project was accepted and granted and then people the researchers they were already mentioning OSM, which means that i would say from the beginning it's already in the researcher head interesting interesting um is it possible to know if academic papers or reports were published from from these projects is that listed in the de deliverables so usually you have one deliverable which is listing uh, the the publications or the the actions that 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 that, that, that were made during the project so for each project it's mandatory to have a look uh, to, sorry, to have a list of what you published. So you could find that we haven't, you know, glanced at that specifically with Thibaut, but it's possible it's public information totally. From the project that I've been working in, we had to do that also. I remember that. Okay. Um, the next question is, are you planning to look at how OSM data is used in these projects uh, in future studies? Example is, is OSM being used as a, as a base map or is it used in spatial analysis and people are interacting deeper with the data? Yeah, that's, that's a nice one too. Uh, actually, the, uh, we haven't mentioned that, but the fact that we only reviewed the mentions or the occurrences in the text is a bit putting every, every uh, thing into the same hat. I know that. Um, the next step is obviously to have a further or like a finer grain look at what's possible to have a look at. Uh, so that's why we also, during the process, so if people want to have a look at the scripts that we have on the GitHub, during the process, we also extract the texts where we find you know, something which is matching an occurrence. And then the next step for the next level would be to have a look at more NLP related uh, tools in order you know, to really extract the context all around the dimensions. So oh, that would be interesting to have a better look at how it's used. Yeah, yeah. Excellent. Um, this next question says, uh, H2020 usually organizes funding into thematic areas. Is OSM visible in thematic areas not traditionally uh, associated with OSM? Um, they go on to say, I suppose it would not be surprising to see OSM used in environmental, ge geographic themes, but did you find OSM in any other uh, thematic areas in uh, in Horizon 2020 that you thought were kind of surprising? Well, funnily, yes, we did. Uh, the thing is that uh, sometimes there are some mentions of OSM, you know, popping up because people from the beginning, they are presenting themselves uh, using OpenStreetMap with with links or URLs. So typically, let me give you an example. Uh, let's imagine that I have like a, um, a project doing complete only mathematical theory, which is not related to any kind of geo something. Mm -hmm. But within the, the first variable, we mentioned that, OK, Damien is coming from there uh, in Ria Sophia Antipolis. And then you have like an OSM uh, URL there. Uh, Thibaut is coming from Montpellier. So meaning that people or researchers, they are sometimes using links or URLs pointing to some point of interest directly. I mean, for unrelated to geo data. So that was that was a fun, uh, a funny thing, which is cool because then it means that people are not using Google Maps to do that. That's great, actually. <laughs> Certainly. Yeah, that's that's interesting. Um, it looks like yeah. we have a clarification question here. Uh, someone's asking if you could explain the slide with the, the pie chart with the POIs. Um, and okay. I'll give you back, uh, yeah. make you the presenter again. So, um, what can you explain? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay, you should be able to, yeah. 
yeah, yeah. Uh -huh. So this line, I suppose. Let me make it full screen. Okay, so the idea here is that, so in addition to all the OpenStreetMap, Google Maps, Baidu Maps, Bing Maps mentioned uh, in the text, we also had a look at POI and point of interest. And the idea we had in mind was to correlate a bit them together. And what that pie chart is showing is among the deliverables mentioning point of interest, which were, you know, 2200 roughly, there were 1700 mentioning exclusively point of interest without any kind of co-occurrence, whether OSM or Google Map or Bing or Baidu Map or whatever. And that was surprising for us because we thought initially with Tibo that whenever some point of interest mentioned or whenever point of interest is mentioned in a deliverable, it should be somehow, you know, related uh, to something like a geo data provider or like a, a zoom towards some cartographic mentions. So that, that, that's the, the finding here on that slide. I don't know if, it, if that answers properly the question. I, I, th I think so. I think that that um, further that that explanation. Let's see if there's any comments in the in the chat. Um, yeah, no, thank you, thank you for that. Um, we had another question came in asking, um, and I think this is a very interesting one because I think that people have been trying to uh, measure the impact or value of, of of OSM for for a while. And so this question is asking if you can estimate the actual value of OSM to European based research. Is it possible to estimate how much public money is saved simply by having OSM as a free and open uh, database? Um, you mentioned you know, it's, it's backed by 4 billion euros of public money, um, but none of that money is necessarily needed to acquire the data, um, mm -hmm. opening that money up to other, um, yeah. Well, this is, can you hear me? Yes. yes. Yeah, okay. Uh, this is a nice question um, that that would be worth uh, trying to, to definitely answer. Um, because when we say with Tibo that, it, that it's backed by 4 billion euros of public money, we meant that the amount of public money involved into this project were totaling 4 billion euros. Obviously, we don't know exactly what what's the share, uh, but it would be great to further promote OSM as an open initiative, an open source, and an open tool, an open database that actually making making a comparative, even if it's if, even if it's a bit a bit of a, an approximation, would be really cool. Um, I would say it is possible to estimate how much public money there has been saved. Uh, we could do that by um, by further looking, you know, at the context of each mention. So it would it would be related to one of the previous questions that we had uh, about, you know, having a look at the context and not exclusively the mention. Yep. Yeah. Building on that, do you think it would be possible to consider um, a comparison against a, another major, fun, major funding block, such as the, the National Science Foundation in the United States? Um, do you think this I research would, approach yeah. can be compared? I'd say so, yes. Yeah. Um, for us, at the moment, we are planning to extend the, fund, the you know, the study to other European programs because those are the same interfaces. So it's easy to adapt the scripts directly there. But definitely it would be really, really worth having a look at what's happening on the other continents too, because Europe is definitely not the only one. <laughs> <laughs> certainly, certainly. Yeah, um, certainly it is. <laughs> okay, let's see if there's any other things in the chat. Yes, the POI uh, question was answered. Um, 
Okay, I had the, I had one last. Uh, um, what? Oh, go ahead. Did we get? I think we got all of the all of the questions that were in there. Well, can can I hit myself with a question? Does one? I think you jumped one. Um, oh, absolutely. One at the moment. Yeah. So. Oh, did, did oh, I shouldn't have hit myself with this one? This one is a bit harder, actually. That that's why you skipped it. Um, so this one, <laughs> actually, if I'm planning some, if we are planning some kind of analysis that would connect the amount of firms, you know, secure. Uh, so it would be interesting, actually. I would be the same, uh, the same answer depending on the findings. When we would have a look at the context, we could then maybe extract uh, some findings on how to better write. Uh, how to write a better winning proposal, if, if that's the answer. Yeah. Sorry. That would be a, fin a fantastic resource for, uh, for, <laughs> for researchers. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> definitely. Um, I guess I have, I have, I have one, um, one last question that I had written down when I saw that first slide, it was, um, and I noticed that that was also a log scale, right? So dimensions of OSM mm -hmm. were, more than six times as as large as um, as the next. And when you started into this work, did you did you have a an inkling that that was what it was going to look like, and that's why you started this this research? Or when that when those numbers came out, were you absolutely as blown away as as I was? Well, I ha okay, I have to be a bit honest. Um, we have been working a bit into that kind of area, like for for a while. So I w I was working in a European project based on how to make, to uplift the value of points of interest, which was named SLIPO, S-L-I-P-O, um, a while ago. And there we were working a lot with points of interest. Everything was, you know, using OpenStreetMap and using the database. Uh, and we were uh, a bit trying to avoid as much as possible any kind of um, other geodata provider, such as Google Maps. So mm -hmm. I had no idea of, of on the final results, but I was definitely expecting that kind of trend, especially because H2020 is, you know, really pushing towards open access, open data. So it was not a full surprise to see that. But what was interesting to me was that it was actually almost a deep flow from one provider to another. Like you always have one order of magnitude. So OpenStreetMap is in the 10,000-ish, Google Map in the 1,000-ish number of occurrences, and then you have Baidu only, I know Bing, sorry, Bing Maps is only a few hundreds of mentions, and then Baidu, a few units. So that was really interesting to see that kind of curve, seeing that really in Europe, OpenStreetMap is that much more used than Google Maps typically. That's why the questions you had about the, the, the US national funding would be really interesting because there are big uh, private players in the US, typically Apple Maps, they were not looked at at all. Would be interesting to see what's happening in the US. Certainly. Yeah, I, yeah, I, 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 I'm not very curious about how we can, uh, adapt your research to to the National Science Foundation in, in the United States because I I I really have no idea what that would what that would look like. I, I have a hunch that mm. it wouldn't be anywhere near as um but I I, I, I don't know. Um, uh, another question has come in here. Uh, as a side product of your research, what's your recommendation to publish openly um, paper data and 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 software? What what are some of the lessons that, that you two have learned? Mm. Are there any good practices there? Uh, well, the, the idea uh, that I would say is that when it comes to papers and articles, usually what we try to do is to use um, big national uh, repositories. I mean, for the papers, this is what I'm trying to do for, 
the scientific papers. I'm trying to use the French national repository for scientific publications because I have, maybe I'm wrong, but I have the feeling that I could a bit trust more my state rather than a private company. Uh, unfortunately for software, uh, the community, especially the researchers, they are heavily relying on GitHub. Uh, we all know that it belongs to Microsoft now. Uh, it's a bit dangerous because maybe one day they'll cut, they'll cut the access down and shut down everything. Uh, and for data, um, there are some European repository to store data sets there. So usually this is when I'm working with semantic web data, which is usually my daily uh, task. I'm relying on the European portal there, which is often broken, but anyway, like trying to do the best we can <laughs> with the tools we have. Yes. Um, oh, we just got one more, just came in. Um, for a future study, it might also be interesting to compare how often OSM data is used compared to how uh, compared to how often open mm -hmm. administrative data is used. Um, I think that's a, yeah, I, I, I agree with that. It looks like you do as well. We haven't been thinking about that at all. Oh, thanks for the suggestion. I know OSM data is often compared to um, you know, other administrative data or authoritative data um, in terms of quality comparisons and, and such or extrinsic quality. Um, so it's interesting to think about it in this way of how often one's used um, over the other. Um, well, thank you both so much. Um, unless there's some, some other last minute questions, um, I, will, uh, I will wrap up this, uh, uh, I'll wrap up this session. Um, Thank you to everyone who uh, has come and watched, um, and also a special uh, thank you to all of our authors, everyone who submitted to the academic track this year. I think this was a very successful uh, fourth um, fourth year of the academic track at State of the Map. Um, again, the proceedings uh, will be published openly on Zenodo um, in the coming days, and um, yeah, we hope that everyone enjoys. Uh, enjoys the rest of the, the remaining hours of the conference. Um, there's also, oh, I'd, I'd like to put a plug in for the OSM science mailing list. Um, that is, you can, you can sign up for that. Um, that is the spot where we're trying to have all of the kind of academic conversations around, uh, or, or research related uh, conversations around OSM. So we will be talking about the proceedings and putting links out there as well. Um, and it's a great place to, um, talk to other researchers, meet other researchers, ask questions. Um, so please, um, please do sign up for that. And yes, thank you all. Uh, thank you all once again for, for coming and um, looking forward to, to seeing you all next year. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks very much. Thanks.